What's up, guys, and welcome to Brewing the Cinema, where we review movies. Tonight, we are wrapping up our love affair with Glenn Powell. Again, like I said in my last review, he this dude is on an absolute heater the last year and a half. So this is the third film we've done of his. I promise it's the last one for a while, and we'll get into some other movies that don't have Glenn Powell in them. But for now, we're going to be tra- talking about anyone but you it says it came out in 2023 but it came out i think like a few months ago if i recall correctly uh it is it's now on netflix uh you have to have the upper tier to get it fortunately enough i have that but again this is on the upper tier it's not on the regular tier and again i'm sure it's on other streaming services but this is where i watched which was netflix it is a rom-com. I think it's loosely based off of a Shakespeare play called A Lot to Do About Nothing or something along those name lines. Again, not a Shakespeare guy, so if I butcher the name of that play, I do apologize. This is, again, it's a rom-com. It's quick. It's like an hour 40, hour 43. Again, it's starring Glenn Powell as Ben, Sidney Sweeney as Patrice. And basically, this is a love story of two individuals who meet, have instant instant chemistry like you see in every single rom-com ever made they meet the girl's kind of a she's you know successful but she's kind of a goof she spills coffee on her on herself in the bathroom because she has to go to the bathroom and the guy buys her coffee so she can go to the bathroom it's a whole thing they, the, you have the meet cute right off the rip um they spend a whole day together they hit it off and then she leaves and then he's like what the hell and she comes back, he's talking shit about her. And we find out, like, you know, how many months later, um, they haven't spoken since, obviously. So, you know, it sets up the nice, you know, they're going to meet in butt heads in public. So we find out that his roommate's sister is marrying Sydney Sweeney's best friend, who is also a girl. And we find out that they're, and they're trying to bring them together, and they don't realize that that, each one is a person they've been talking like shit about <laughs> basically to each other. So it's kind of, again, they have another little meet cute and they instantly hate each other. Cause they're both like, they, she's like, Oh, you're talking shit about me. He goes, you know, well you walked out and left, you know, you, you know, and none of them really says what they, what they should be saying in this instance, which is, you know, normal human connections in real life. You just go, well, you left. And I was talking shit to my buddy because you hurt me. You know, you, you that, that that sucks. Like, you just walked out, didn't say nothing, didn't say bye. It's not like it was, I didn't, apparently Ben didn't see this as a one-night stand here to Sydney Sweeney. Again, they had instant chemistry. It's a whole thing. Then, of course, we have the, oh, we're going to Sydney, Australia to get married where the, our parents live. So, of course, we get the one of the best parts of this film is honestly the scenery and stuff you get to see of Australia. Um, You get to see how beautiful this country is, even though there's a million things there that will kill you. (laughs) But uh, but, uh, I digress. But anyways, you get to see the beautiful Australia in all the misadventures they have together, pretending to be together because, of course, why not? Both of their exes who broke their hearts will... Ben's ex broke his heart. She's from Australia. She has her new boo there. And of course, he's like a study. He's like a stud looking Aussie guy, you know, great shape and has the accent. He Ben's like, I don't see what you're seeing this guy. But of course, he lives in the same country as her. And he it's a whole thing. And then Sydney Sweeney had just broken up with her ex for of, of like long term, uh, which is Jonathan played by Darren Barnett. And of course, Marguerite is Ben's ex played by Charlie Frazier, both good looking people because you're not going to, you're just going to have to look at people, good looking people. That's just how films just work usually. And so then they decide, you know what, instead of us fighting and trying to kill each other, when we're in public, we're going to pretend like we're together, that we got together and we're, and we're a couple, we're a team. And so they basically use each other, use, you know, yeah, they use each other in a sense because Ben wants to make his ex jealous to get her back. And Sydney, but at the same time, it's weird because Sydney Sweeney doesn't want anything to do with her ex. She's like, no, I, I don't want to be with him. But of course, the parents fly him into Australia, fly him across halfway across the world to try and get them back together because they just think he's just this great guy. He's perfect for you. And of course, that wouldn't cause any problems. So, of course, Jonathan sees like that, like, you know, that 
Patrice, Sydney Sweeney, and and Ben have this, you know, this chemistry, and like he's like, you know, I didn't really chat a new guy or whatever, and they're like, it's new, and and all this stuff ensues, and of course they cause chaos for this entire film together. You know, they're lighting flower structures on fire. Uh, they're stripping down to their underwear on the side of the cliff because there's like bugs on them or something or other. I forget what it was. And, you know, and then of course, the, you know, we have the boat incident where Cindy Sweeney goes overboard. Can't really. And he she's a good swimmer. And we find that she's a good swimmer and she swims to like a, like a buoy in the middle of the lake. Of course, the riverboat is going to have to call in the water rescue team. Of course, Glenn Powell jumps in after because what else are you going to do? If you don't care about the person, you don't care about what you really do. And of course, they finally have the talk they should have had like a year ago about, you know, you left me and then I was talking crap with my buddy because you hurt me. And she goes, well, I didn't mean to hurt you, blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, you know, we get to the wedding and, well, actually, before the wedding, they destroy the wedding. They basically destroy the cake that they spend all this money on. And this whole time, the family's like, is like doing this weird, like, hey, you should be actually really be with this person, even though you're really not. But we know you're not really together. And they're both like, no, no, no. And, of course, the wedding comes, it gets the reception and Myrie's like, oh, I got rid of my, the new guy. I want to be with you again. And Ben's like, I don't know. She kissed him. Sydney Sweeney sees it. And when she's like, I need to tell him how I feel because I really have feelings for him. And of course, why not? Then she runs off and Ben has to go find her. He jumps into the water. And what else would happen? The water rescue has to come and get him. It takes him to the opera house, which is where Sydney Sweeney's always wanted to go. Again, beautiful scenery in Sydney, Australia. Someplace I would love to go at some point. Again, I digress. So they have the big romantic gesture. He gets off the helicopter, runs, kisses, and happily ever after. So this movie had a, again, that's a, just a massive quick synopsis. This movie had a lot of the same cliche rom-com stuff. The will they, won't they. They like each other, but they don't really like each other. Let's make each other jealous. The exes get involved, and the exes don't want to be involved. The parents are getting involved. The couple causes chaos. It's just, it's all the basic rom-com tropes you would expect from a film. Um, luckily, this was not a, a Netflix film because it would have been very, I mean, this was kind of predictable. But as a Netflix film, we all have all seen the Netflix rom-coms that they've just pumped out for years now. They're successful, so they got whatever strategy they're working is, is using is working. So overall, um, this is a nice, like I call this like a week, I heard this on their podcast, a a weekend watch or like a midday TV watch. I heard it on, the, on the, that kind of phrase on their podcast. And I kind of liked it. So I'll use it here. And uh, so if you're bored on the middle of the week or like a weekday or you're on vacation, you need something to watch late at night. This is a good little hour for you. It's quick. It's to the point. Wraps it up with a nice little bow and you're done. And it's really nothing you really probably need to visit again. Honestly, it's just me personally. Um, cause again, I know any, really anything about Sydney Sweeney until this film. I had never seen you for, which I know she's super famous from. I've never seen it. So didn't know what to expect from her in the film. I, you know, I thought they did a good job, but again, it's just the super predictable tropes of the rom-com genre, which again, I am a sucker for myself, but sometimes I like to be like surprised with like weird endings, not the same ending every single time. So with that being said, I'm going to give this like a 6.7 out of 10. Again, it's a little better than your average rom-com because you have a good cast. You also have uh, Alexandria Ship. She's been in a few things like Jexy and a couple other things. So overall, again, like I said, a 6.8 .6 out of 10. And I will not really sure what movie I'm covering next. But when I know, you will know. Until next time, I'll see you at the movies.